Hi, I'm Mike Wong. I'm John Kimball. And we are here today at Rockwest Composites because my good friend John is gonna show us how to build a carbon fiber plate. This plate is gonna be used because we want to build a pair of carbon fiber sunglasses. And we can use this as the frame. Right. And other things, we can use this plate to uh, repair a hole in my car. Or we could make drone bodies. Yes. We could make RC car frames. The world is our oyster, John. Lots of things with it. What's the first rule of everything? Have fun. Well, okay, that's the first, what's the second rule then? Safety. Safety, that's right. Since we're making a flat plate, we're using something extremely flat, yes. such as this piece of glass. Right, so we're just gonna use a flat plate. The glass is smooth. It'll give a really nice shiny surface on one side. We've also masked off the edges because we are gonna put a vacuum bag on it. And the vacuum bag requires vacuum integrity. And so if we have wax on the edges when we put our tape down, mm -hmm. it probably won't stick to it. So the first thing is we're gonna wax up the glass. Right, so you wanna put some gloves on. Inside the can, there is a sponge applicator. And then just rub it everywhere on the surface. You wanna make it kind of as a thin coat as possible because uh, you're gonna be buffing it off and if it's really thick, you'll have a lot of work ahead of you. All right. So now we have to let it haze, okay. which means it has to dry and it'll take, depending on how thick the wax is, it'll take about four or five minutes. All right. And then as soon as it's not slimy to the touch, you can just wipe it off. So just buff it off the same way that you put it on. Okay, got my rag here. Yep. Mr. Miyagi would be proud. And then just do one more final buffing, because there will be uh, some little wax particles that are left on the surface, and we don't want those on the surface of the part. Once we've done that, we get to do it five or six more times. So it's like give yourself about an hour to prep the surface. Yeah, it, could, it, dry. it could take that much, half an hour to an hour. Okay. We're gonna remove the masking from the edges and we're going to put our vacuum bag sealant tape, sometimes called chromate, all the way around the edges and that will give us a really tight seal for our vacuum bag because we can't have any air leaking into the part. You warned me about vacuum integrity. Yes. John, when I think of you, I think of someone that has a ton of vacuum integrity. <laughs> we'll start in one corner. We'll lay it down right on that area where we move the tape. Okay. We can either cut it on the corner or we can fold it around the corner. Aha. Uh -huh. So when we get to this corner, we want to make sure that we overlap, overlap it without the backing. Let's reach over and grab our material. This is the carbon fiber that we previously cut. Yes. You can see this can cause problems. So we wanna make sure that when we put everything together, yeah. that we don't have any of the carbon fibers going across our tape because that will create a leak path. Just remember, anything that shows up on the surface will show up in your part. We have a, a material called flow media which allows us to let the resin flow over the surface. So I notice there's this yellow side. Yeah. Then we and got the white, the side. white side. Surface goes down towards your part. Okay. So we just set it right on top of here. And you'll notice that it is slightly larger in all areas than the actual part. So I've got it about one inch bigger. We have our spiral tube that will go on the inlet and the outlet. It uh, allows the resin to flow from an inlet mm -hmm. all the way across the surface and the resin will flow more evenly across it. Cuts with scissors, 
This is our flash breaker tape. Does it matter, could I just use regular masking tape if I wanted to, or? You could. Um, this will come off easier in the end. Tape it down so that it doesn't move. And are we gonna do this on both ends? Yes, I'm gonna put a little more tape on it, just so that it doesn't move on us. Does it have to be taut? No, it doesn't. The next thing, we have our resin hubs. Okay. And this is where our resin will be introduced in it, through the bag. So we take this and we just cram it over the top of this. Nice. And I assume you want it centered on the part? Yeah, pretty much centered. Okay. Hey, why am I wearing gloves and you're not? Because we don't need gloves right now. <laughs> so the next thing we need to do is we need to put the vacuum bag on it. I've got our bag already cut. You'll notice that it's generally the same width as this part. Make the bag nice and square so that it's easy to work with. But you'll also notice that it is quite a bit longer and that's because we want to put some pleats in and that is to account for any ridges or things that you have in the part so that the bag will go around them instead of bridging over the top of them. Let's start at the back side over here and we will just peel this away. And then we are going to line up this bag, this edge simply by snapping it in place. Okay. Now, let's line up the front edge the same way. Plenty of slack in the bag. Okay. And we want to line up that edge. Now, for the pleats. So the best way to do that, we want two pleats in here. Uh -huh. So let's take this bag and if you just pull it up tight, that shows us where the center of the bag is. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll just bring this down right to the center, and that will leave gotcha. the two pleats. pleats. And that's for the ports? That's right. Okay. So if you just tear that back in a little bit. Before you stick it down, let's pull it up tight again and make sure we have the center. And then we'll just take that center and put it right down in the center. We have to do the fun part, which is the pleats. This does take a little bit of skill. We take it and just make sure we pull it kind of nice and snug and we pull that right down to the center. So now we need to know how tall these pleats need to be. So I'll just take an estimate. It needs to be bigger than that. So I'll take that. You can have one of those. You'll just set it inside. And the reason we're doing this is to make sure that it's a complete seal, right? A complete yeah. seal. No air can get into the bag once you start. It looks like we're only doing about half of it. Yeah. Okay. Take the backing paper off and then just snug it down until it overlaps. You always have to have overlaps. If you have a void here at the top, it will leak. So now we have a pleat that sits right over the top of that hose. Now we have our bag in place. Okay. We won't know if we have any leaks until we evacuate the air out of the system. So we need to have a way to get that air out. And we also have to have a way to get the, the resin in. So this will be our inlet port. Mm -hmm. And this will be our exit port. What we'll want to do is just kind of pull some bag down around it. We're just going to cut the top out of that nice and easy and be very careful with the razor blade. I've got this tube already made. This and stick is going to help us clamp it to the, the resin bucket so that it doesn't move around. All right. So we'll just slide this tube in there nice and snug and there's a clamp right there. Yep. You see? Just clamp that right on there. To the side wall. Right there. Okay. There. If you'll just hold this for me right now. Okay. What we do is we're going to take some of this tape again and we're going to wrap it around it to seal that. Uh huh. And we'll just wrap it around here several times. Same thing. Yeah, let's pull that nice and. Bag's flat. Bag around there like that. Can I just do a little X mark? Yeah, let's try that. Right. Now we'll take our tube. Now typically you could do this as a, a one person job, right? Yeah. Okay. The next step, we need to do a vacuum test on it. So we're gonna hook this up. We are going to 
Introduce the vacuum. This is yeah. the vacuum pump. So a vacuum accumulator to me basically looks like a big metal pot with yeah. a sealable lid. Yeah, this can also be called a vacuum chamber. Okay. These are special clamps. You can pull it apart. Uh -huh. And then put it right over the tube. Okay. Stick it back together, snap it on. So we are going to leave the vacuum side open. All right. Put it down here about an inch off the top. Okay. Let's turn our vacuum on. See everything tightening up. So it looks like the air is getting sucked out. So now we've switched over to our in-house vacuum line, which doesn't have any noise, and we can actually hear our leaks a little bit better. And you can hear them all I'm, the way around. I hear about four leaks right now, John. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe more. But you can, when you find, when you hear a leak, you can just simply press. See that found yep. one? Sometimes they're right here in the corners. Okay. Sometimes they're along the edges. So we just continue to work them until we don't hear any more. If we look at our vacuum meter here, we can yep. see that we are currently pulling about 26 inches of mercury. That is the measurement for vacuum. So it's not PSI, uh -huh. but it's inches of mercury. Okay. So at our altitude, 26 inches is about as good as it gets. How long do you want to let this sit for? So now that's holding. Um, depending on the size of the part, um, you can you can let it sit for a minute, two minutes, or if it's a very large part with a lot of detail, you might want to wait half an hour to an hour sometimes. Okay. But you'll notice by the meter here, when that stops moving and it reaches its full potential, there really isn't much more to be pulled out of it. Now we need to look at our leak test. What we can do is simply close this valve so we're not pulling vacuum out of it anymore. Okay. And then we can watch the needle for a couple of minutes to see if it drops anything. All right. If the needle moves, you know we have air, air is being pulled in. All right. So let's shut this off and see what happens. Okay. If you're looking at the edge, you can see like this wrinkle right here, how yeah. it's nice and tight. If it's not tight, there will be a leak path that runs all the way around the edges. It looks like yep. it's holding. Yep. Okay. So the next thing is obviously we got to prepare the resin. So there's a formula that we use, and it's based on the amount of material that you use. There's a, a number for carbon fiber called GSM, or grams per square meter. That just tells you how heavy it is per square meter. Okay. We take that, we multiply that GSM by the width and the length, so we have our area of each ply, uh -huh. and then we multiply it by the number of plies. So how many plies did we have? Well, I think we had four plies. No, we had six plies. Ooh. Way off, way off. <laughs> Formula. GSM, GSM times, times surface, area, surface area times the number of layers. Times the number of plies, correct. All right. Then we need to add some for the tubes and the material. We like to add about a thousand grams. We just have to make sure that we have enough resin because if you run out of resin and you start sucking air through this tube, yeah. that's big problems for your part. If I can get the lid off. Oh, sure. We're gonna use our West system, 105 system, with our 209 hardener. The 209 is a slow hardener, gives us about 40 minutes of pot life. We're gonna use the slow hardener so that we have enough time to make it pass through there. Pot life is how long it is uh, viable in the pot that you mix it in. This only has a 40 minute? 40 minute pot life. You can either do it by volume if you want to, if you know approximately how much you need. You can use one pump of this and one pump of that and it gives you the correct mix ratio, which is three to one. The other way to do it is by weight. And since we have our formula to figure out how much resin we need, we're gonna do it by weight. After doing the calculations, we want about 1,300 grams. And then we put a bucket on and we tear it. Zero it out. For this one, we need 929 grams. Five, six, 45. Okay. 45, nice. 45 pumps of those right. got us to our 930 grams. But we're also going to tear it again. One more? One more. Perfect. All right. We've got our resin in there, we got our hardener in the bucket. Now we need to stir it. See kind of how it looks. It's got a kind of a milky marbled look to it. Yeah. We need to mix that until there is no marbling left. So it's a nice even consistency. We're gonna take a, 
introduce it. And this stick is there to kind nice of Nice and it smart, otherwise this could probably pop out. Yeah, it could pop out or something like that. Now, I, might, I should mention that at this point, you could evacuate the resin in a vacuum chamber. It's not 100% necessary, but you do get better results. It's not a wise thing to let your resin run all the way across and then up into the tube. You want to stop the flow so that it can absorb all the resin that's back here because there will be less vacuum back here. Gotcha, so there's a and lag. It will catch up to it. Okay. So we go within, in this case, probably two to three inches. We'll stop this flow. We'll let the resin, can, the vacuum to continue, and then we should be able to close it off and limit our amount of resin going up into our tube. Let's open this up and see what happens. Here comes the resin. Voila, I see it flowing down to the uh, port. Yep, so it's coming down through the port now. We're gonna open it up a little bit more just to get that flow in there. Now you see the resin start coming down yep. the tubes. Now you can see it coming clear to the ends. And that's roughly been about a minute. So for a size like this, what do you think? Five minutes to? Uh... Maybe 15. Oh. Yeah. All right. The material is approaching our hub, yep. and we kind of want to restrict that flow. So we're going to turn off the resin right now and let the existing resin that's kind of pooled on this end, makes this side a little bit soft, let it work itself across. Went pretty fast. It was about uh, 10 minutes to that point. We can see here that the resin is starting to pull up into the tube. Okay. The air surges that are coming through there, which is a good sign. And uh, we're just waiting for this to get all the way across. We can see that the resin has gone all the way across the surface. It hasn't gone all the way here, but that's okay. It's gone through our material right. and it's all wet out. So now we want to close off the vacuum so that we can let it cure. So we've closed it off. Do we just let it sit overnight? Yeah. Okay. All right, okay. John. So it's been a whole day. So now we're ready to take it apart. Excellent. Let's see how this plate turned out. Okay, so first thing, we, we saved the clamps. Everything else is disposable. And I noticed you already cut the tubes. Cut those tubes uh, after the resin cured last night. All right. So now we can just take the chromate and just peel it off. We can use a razor blade to get under this edge. Kind of pop it up. Pop it up and then we can start peeling it. There you go. Look at that. Nice. They get just the ingredient cloth with some resin yep. in it. Now we have our part here. Nice surface there. All right. So now we can do the same process. Just move under, under it and slide under there. And okay. This is where we're going to be a little bit careful. And once we get it started, I take a popsicle stick and just kind of work it over there. Can't wait to see this. And voila. Well, this is this is what I was looking forward to, that nice shiny finish. Yeah, look how beautiful that is. All right. Pretty stiff. Well, it's got yeah. some stiff, some flex. This, yeah. is only this is only four layers? Six layers. Six so layers. we're about about 60,000, 60 to 65,000 thick. Okay. What are we gonna do with it? I don't know. We talked about sending this to our water jetting partner, maybe make some sunglasses. Um, talked about doing a body for a drone. Right. Let's, uh, let's hit the drafting table and come up with some things. Okay. 